Check this out. <laughs> Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets of Scotland Hello and welcome to Dirty Secrets of Scotland at the ball tip Bitterly cold northerly wind today So I ain't gonna stand around and talk I'm gonna get digging Let's do just that That's my rectangle dug out. Big dead root. Rotten tree is always a good thing. I don't know if you saw in the time lapse, but this came out right at the start, straight off the ash. I don't know if it'll be any good though because <coughs> it's uh, so shallow. It might be cracked. It's got white stuff inside, but I don't know. I'm tempted just to not touch this too much in case it breaks it. Um, with it being so cold just now. Beautiful little green poison anyway, hopefully it'll clean up well. Also this big lid thing as well, straight off the top. And a couple of bits are broken. And this lid as well, I'm pretty sure this is fresh. Because that would be separated if it wasn't. Also the, fre the ash lid just seems really fresh. So yeah, could be a good one, let's see. Fingers crossed, eh? Dig down roundup. Well, it's a bit wet as you can see. And what you can see is, or maybe you can a little bit actually, at the back of the hole I've dug a trench into the sand, all that wet sand's come out. And I'm trying to make that act as a drain, so that most of the water will gather in that drain I can dig in. Sort of relative dryness, he says. Look at my shoes. <laughs> Look at this space as well. It's pretty crazy. Oh, what's that? Oh, nice. Didn't even see that. That's obviously flowing out. I think it's clear glass though. Check it. Yeah, clear glass inkwell. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is all the ash that came off the top, and you can see where it changed and it went really, really wet. It's been very wet and rainy here in Scotland recently, so not really surprising. And I'm going to switch to these gloves next, the waterproof gloves, which again was bought by uh, Kofi Donation, so thank you to everyone that's donating to that. Um, as far as bottles are concerned, a couple of almost full teacups, which is pretty mad. Um, that one's just missing a handle. That one's got the handle, but it's just got a hole in the side. I checked it earlier. Uh, no print or anything. Broken bottles, that's a plain jar. California fix it up every single dig. You always find plenty of them. This is the glass, a Glasgow Glen Cell bottle. I think that's actually very early machine made because it's got the line there at the top. This is a bit of a heartbreaker because it's a lovely bottle, but it's plain. Um, medicine Amber, uh, I showed you this lid earlier. This is a heartbreaker as well, it's a Lipton's. I don't know if that's the tea company Lipton's. He's got the top off it, I would definitely have been taking that home. Otherwise, London, was that say C-E-C, what, oh, Ceylon something? I don't know, can't really see that. C-E-Y London, I don't know. Uh, this is nice, sauce bottle, plain, but lovely size and drippy lippy, so that'll be coming home and getting cleaned up. Plain. Uh, little lemonade um, crystals. Um, I love this amber, there's nothing on it, but it's just a beautiful bottle. Look, it's sort of cross between green and amber. And then this as well. I don't know if it's actually okay or not. Um, I won't find out until I clean it, but I'm not going to mess with it too much or it might break with a thermal shot from my fingers. So, yeah, that's the dig down roundup. And uh, let's get back in there, shall we? Just had this off the bottom, it's a plain cream pot. Um, these are great though because uh, our Etsy store does well with stuff like this stone, where even though it's plain, you know, still, uh, still does. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What's that? Oh, wow. Western, Western countries, creameries, Yeovil, 
and Westbury. That's an English cream pot. West Country cream pot. Amazing. That's not plain at all. And I won't be going on Etsy. Sorry, folks. Amazing. That is an absolute belter. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> that's amazing. On the way down, or just, just after I've dug down, this is the first thing that's come out. It's absolutely incredible. Superb. Look how shiny it is as well. Ooh. I need to research that as well. I don't think I've seen more. I've seen ones that are like this, like incised and then glazed, but I don't think I've ever seen this exact one. I'm trying my best, by the way, not to fall backwards into the trench that I dug to drain the water away, which hasn't really done much, to be honest. Um, but yeah, wow, cool. Well, you know what comes next. Underneath the soil or buried in the ground There's a lot of treasure to be found Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland Poison bottles, belt buckles, ginger beers, enamel signs Hammer coins and Hamiltons are some of the things you might find if you're lucky Underneath the soil Or buried in the ground There's a lot of treasure To be found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets Of Scotland So pack your bag and spade And come with us today In 1888 James Shorland Aplin And William Henry Barrett Merged their wholesale dairy business together making and marketing cheese, butter and cream. In 1891, the Western Counties Creamery moved to Marston Magna from Rimpton, and in 1898 it was amalgamated with Aplin and Barrett Limited. This aerial perspective sketch of 1898 shows their planned factory and office buildings which were constructed by the time of the 1901 Ordnance Survey. Their St Ivo brand was born in 1901 and applied to a range of their products, even though there is no real saint of that name. The brand became nationally famous for their butters, creams and cheeses. On the 11th of August 1912, a fire broke out in the factory, but was contained within one wing. The fire was watched by a crowd of several hundred people, I imagine if that was now, they'd all be filming on their phones. But eventually, the fire was put out by the fire brigade. The Western Gazette reported, A new and valuable machinery and a very large stock of a most inflammable character were contained within the buildings. The St Ivo brand is still going today, in spite of several different owners and branding changes. According to my research, they're still the main suppliers of milk for retail giants, Marks and Spencers. Bit of woodland engineering there. I've made myself a decking. <laughs> okay, so my drainage ditch at the back did very little, if anything at all, unfortunately. My decking sunk in about two seconds. So uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to fill this hole in. And what I'm going to do is go up to the shallower part of the tip and dig another hole. Uh, not ideal, but I didn't bring any wellies with me, only army boots. And uh, they aren't leaking yet, but standing in water like that, they're going to. So I may as well cut my losses with this hole, come back to it another time and uh, go further away up into the shallow part and start again. So yeah, I'll get this filled in. I'm just filling in and uh, I jumped in the hole to flattened down some of the, uh, the earth uh, and ash and uh, <laughs> watch this whoa that's so strange it's kind of like what I imagine dancing on a, a waterbed would be like whoa <laughs> that's so weird cool glad you joined me for that hole number one all filled in now to dig hole number two. Hey! Alright, next time I'll bring my wellies and then I don't have to dig two holes. But that's what I'm going to have to do, so that's fine. I'll just get on now and hopefully I'll find some 
interesting things at the uh, the shallow part of the tip. I had lots of broken, but this is the first full bottle to come out. I have a feeling it's just a plane. I thought that was a crack. That's actually a tear or a stretched bubble in the bottle. Drippy lippy. Everything at this end is all going to be pretty old, I'm pretty sure. And it's the very oldest part. It's also really shallow, so it makes it quite difficult to dig, especially if you're six foot tall. Sarah loves it because she's a wee shorty. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that, folks. Eh? She'll kill me. Anyway, look at that. It's lovely, isn't it? Nice wee find. Nothing on it, but look at the neck. Lovely. All right, let's crack on. That's me down at the bottom now on the sand. As you can see, it's just slightly less wet. In fact, it's bone dry. Result. Nice, just had this out. I think well ribbed. Not one I've actually had a full one of before, to be honest. I know they're coming, but uh, I like that because I've not got one. Complete as well. Be nice if it was blue. I like the blue ones, but where there's one, there'll be more. Uh, yeah, I love it. Double pen rest, ribbed. Lovely little thing. So a bit of nice sponge for Kit and Caboodlers for their uh, project they're doing. Yeah, got quite a collection of this now. Cool. Well that would have been a hefty beast. Shame I couldn't find a hole. Never mind. Just had this. I think it's a Yorkshire relish but old. Lovely top that. Lovely neck. Look how drippy and lippy. Yeah nice. Sign of good things. Seems that one side of the hole is really burnt and the other side of the hole isn't, so of course I'm going to avoid the really burnt layer and go for the layer that's uh, less so. I thought this was pretty funny. It says Antique. I think it's DM and SS, the makers. Like Antique. <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly was with, wasn't when they made it, but it is now. Look at that. It's cool. Look at that as well. All right. Lunchtime roundup. Okay, so got this just now. It's a plain um, amber medicine. This from before, you've seen this, the sauce, you've seen that before as well. Uh, this lovely ambery green coloured bottle. Plain but beautiful. Sauce from just now. The lid from before, a couple of wee balls. Um, this wee poison, which I think is okay. It just I may be a bit sick inside, I don't know, it may just be some sort of calcium deposit or whatever which I can get out. No problem whatsoever. Uh, these are plain, one is clear, one is aqua, exactly the same size and shape. Lovely wee bottle for Sarah. Don't know if it's sick or not, but I'll find out when I clean it up. Um, oh yeah, these jars, this is cool. Never seen a jar like this. It's aqua glass. I thought it was a screw jar, but it's not. It's a drippy lippy with a funny top, uh, full of bubbles, beautiful. Um, and this one, which is um, octagonal, which is nice. Again with a similar top, again drippy lippy. Aqua glass, lovely. But the best find out of this hole, I think, is this so far. Just because it's really, really pretty and lovely colour. And still the best find today, so far, is this. So I'll have a sandwich now, and then I'll get back in the hole and uh, crack on. Just had this out, plain aqua glass, lovely. Look at the colours and the bubbles. But look at the base. Never seen a base like that. The corners of it and then this dimple. And you can really see the thickness of the wall section of this glass. It's really thick and coarsely made. Lovely. Very nice. Just 
Just had this. I don't think I've had one of these before. Pictorial. Oh, <laughs> it's got something sharp on the front. Spiky. Um, what does that say? Packham. Packham's Glasgow. Pictorial. Of some variety. Small aqua glass beard, I guess. Drippy lippy. Very drippy lippy. Super drippy lippy. Cool. That's a nice wee bottle, that. Very nice. A new one as well. There's someone here, right on the bottom. So I've dug the sand out for a bit already. I don't know if it's hole on that. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but we'll find out in a minute. Ah, oh, it's just a teacup. And I just broke it. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> oh well, plain teacup. Oh, it's all cracked anyway. Just had this. You can already see it's an amber boot scash chemist, an old one. That is a lovely wee bottle. Love that. Uh oh, is that a crack? Oh, that's a shame. There's a crack in the back of it. Still, if I'm going to display it from the front, it doesn't matter. I can't sell it to anybody, but I can keep it for me. Belter. Lovely wee bottle. Just had this. And I actually wiped it with my glove. <laughs> because I thought it was plain. And I should have done that because it's a Kirkcaldy bottle. Kirkcaldy and Dunfermline R. Douglas, which is the same company that made a couple of the ginger beers I found. That is a lovely bottle. Drippy lippy as well. Yep, I should have shown you that before I wiped it, but hey ho, you live, you learn. Just had this heartbreaker. One I don't have. No way I could repair that from that. Well, hopefully there'll be a whole one out there. Check this out, teacup. I'll be so amazed if this isn't damaged. It's got to be damaged. In fact, I can see it is already. Very minor though. Oh, Rosie's on there, look at that. That's really pretty. Let's try and get this stuff out of it without damaging it. Oh, it's stuck. I suppose it would be after all this time. How on earth has that managed to stay that well preserved in the soil? Tiny little chips out here, that's it. Sarah's gonna love that. Don't even think we need to repair it, it's, it's holding off already. Can't believe it's got the handle on it. Absolutely crackers that. Trying to get it to focus. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Crazy. Has it got a maker on it? I think it does, but I can't really read it. 88 and 155 sort of impressed into it. Amazing. <laughs> Just had this out. Ice blue. It's another Bishops. I've had a few of these, a few varieties of these. Bishops Mineral Water Varalettes. These always clean up really, really well and Sarah absolutely loves them. I don't think there's any damage at this point. Yeah, I think it's okay. 
That's a belter. That's a real belter. I love that. Wow. I think that's the second best find today so far. Lovely. Ice blue. Beautiful. Lovely condition. I don't think it's even sick inside at all. Um, sometimes they are with ice blue. But yeah, gorgeous. So, um, Underneath the soil or buried in the ground There's a lot of treasure to be found Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland Poison bottles, belt buckles, ginger beers, enamel signs Hammer coins and Hamiltons are some of the things you might find just had the bovril. Yeah, <laughs> you've got to have a bovril every single time. Yeah, it's nice, nice wee one. Yeah, I'll take it. Two ounce. Bed peg. Missing his stopper. Maybe that's why they threw it out. I've checked it to see if there's any damage. Usually they've got hairlines in them. See that? I love that. Under there, you can see scuffs and scrapes. That's where it's been on a floor. Um, when people have used that 100 years ago. I love that social history. Yeah, this is cool. I don't think it's damaged. Aside from the fact that it's just missing a stopper. But yeah, could cool find that. <laughs> it's a butt. This is just to give you an indication of where I am just now. So there's the hole. I'm digging in that direction. I've just caved scooped out and now I'm going back in again up against that fresh face to see what I can find because amber medicine I'm pretty sure it's embossed on the sides yeah Alan Allenbury <laughs> Alan Allenbury I hope it's a quack here please be a quack here that's so cool as far as I can see it's undamaged can't tell if it's a drippy don't think it's a drippy now it's not a drippy because there's the circle on the bottom of the early machine but that's cool because it's uh, embossed Alan Allenbury, eh? Full time roundup Okay, where to begin? Start with this jar here Just a weird shape Never seen one like that before Nice shape I think it is machine made Possibly and if it is, it's the very, very start of machine making of bottles. Very early. Um, this lovely Krakodi bottle. Um, this big Glasgow bottle. Huge sauce bottle. Beautiful colour. That'll be going on the Etsy store, so look out for it. As will probably this. Beautiful. Just the colours in there are just amazing. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but they're beautiful. Um, this teacup, which is almost complete, probably just needs a tiny, tiny little repair to make it safe, and then, yeah, back to normal. Um, this big jar, which is again a strange jar, I've not seen one like this before. This is a Yorkshire relish, I think. Again, drippy lippy, nice. These little lemonades, there's two or three of them. Um, this was full of water and some horrible gunk. Um, yeah, nice colour though. It's a very strange greeny colour of aqua. So yeah, I like that. That'll be coming on. Uh, this is just pristine uh, panel bottle, but just absolutely stunning. Actually, I think it's got a cork in it and some water in it. So I may try and get that out. Um, put that there for now. This is a nice Glasgow bottle. Never seen one of these before, so particularly happy with that. Always nice to get new ones so it can go with the other beer. Um, that was the first thing I found here on this second hole. Um, just a sauce. Boots Cash Chemist. Yes, it's got a crack in it. Do I care? No. It's coming home with me anyway. It's going on my display. Nobody will know that it's got a crack in it. Apart from 5,200 and something subscribers on YouTube. Anyway, a uh, <laughs> couple of bovrols as per usual. A couple of bits of uh, printed um, spongeware for Kit and Kaboodlers. This lovely one of the best finds today, actually, this uh, inkwell 
just gorgeous that is going to clean up so well in fact you'll probably have already seen it in the video cleaned up because that's how i do my videos lovely little bottle for sarah i found her one of these already and it went straight in our display so i can only imagine this one will as well and i think it's got a little bit of iridescence on these as well which is nice um plain chemist bottle but yeah again this is the kind of thing that people are asking for in our etsy store so yeah this will be going up on etsy as well watch this space folks victorian marble bed peg missing the stopper but we've got loads of them in the house so the chances are we'll have one to fit it this Lee and Perrin's bottle, which I actually found on the surface over there, so someone else has dug this. But uh, yeah, you know, if they don't want it, I'll take it. Lovely drippy lippy, large size, which I don't have, I don't think. So that's nice, aqua glass. Again, that might end up on the Etsy store. And then I've got a Glasgow bottle and an Edinburgh bottle, both camp coffees. And then for the two rock stars today, oh, wait a minute, sorry, three. Let's not forget this wee beautiful not to be taken. I almost missed it because it's so small. I don't think it's damaged and I hope it cleans up well. We will see. Anyway, so there's that. This one, which I've not seen yet. The Bishop's Mineral... What's that? Mineral Water Varalettes. Can't wait to see what they are. Anyway, and then for me, this is the Rockstar. I love my stoneware. Look how beautiful that is with that um, printed on there. I think it's actually incised and then glazed over the top. That's a belter. Again, I thought that was plain, and I'm really, really happy that it is not plain, and that'll go in my collection. And that, everyone, is the full-time roundup. Thanks for joining me on Dirty Secrets of Scotland. Again, I had a really, really, really enjoyable dig today. Really enjoyed it. That cream pot was a really pleasant surprise when I was cleaning it up. Um, yeah, if you want to um, donate to Dirty Secrets of Scotland, you can do so on our Ko-fi page, and it really does help our channel. Also, if you want to buy on our Etsy store, it is updated every week, so look at our Etsy store because it changes a lot. Thank you for joining me. See you next time. Just filling in, and as is often the way on this tip, things get thrown out. It's nothing mega, but it's another bottle. I think it's green. It's full of something. I'll probably get a stick and poke that out. Can you see that? It's like a syrup or something in there. Ooh. Cool though. Nice neck. I'll take it. Nearly ended up getting back filled into the hole. All right. Don't know if you can make that out because it's quite dark now, but that's proper syrup in there and I can't get the cock to go into the bottle. So I'm just going to have to wrap it up well and put it up the way and hope that it doesn't leak all over my bag on the way home. You see that glooping around in there? I wonder what's, what that is, what's in there. I guess I'll find out. <laughs>no doubt know by now that Sarah's got her own channel and um, it's about art and walking it's called she walks she paints and it's out now it's about Sarah walking around the Scottish wilderness the beautiful scenery finding beautiful things that she likes to look off and then taking pictures of them taking them back to her studio and painting them I would really really appreciate it if everybody out there went over there and at least take a look because I think it's really good. We're both working on it together as well as Dirty Secrets of Scotland. You know, it's our first ever YouTube channel. So yeah, go over there. If you like what you see, give her a like. Even better, give her a sub. Nice one. But yeah, I should have said there's a lot of Scottish history on there as well. It's really worth a watch. Check it out.
I'm a guitarist, that's my first instrument, so I tend to start on guitar, and then we'll see where it develops. This song isn't actually written, this is something that I'm just making up on the spot, so you'll be able to join me in this little adventure as we go through the process. I don't know what's going in there, live bass perhaps, piano perhaps, strings, I don't know, but we'll see when we get there, so yeah, come and join me. Okay, as I said, the first thing to put down is the guitar for me, so let's do that. Take one. Okay, I've put the guitar in, and now I'm going to put the bass in. Okay, so I've got that sounding pretty good. I've got the bass quite low in the mix, or should I say it's high in the mix, but it's just the low end that you hear. So here you go. It just adds a warmth and a nice bottom end, so to speak. Next I'm going to put some piano notes in just to give it a bit of a lift, more on par with the high of the guitar, because there's a lot in the bottom end now, the bass notes in the guitar and the bass notes on the bass, so we need something a little bit higher, I want to try some uh, piano next. Okay, so I've recorded the guitar, you heard that, and the bass, and the piano, and then all I did is copy and paste over from the piano notes in MIDI into a cello section. I did a bit of reverb and that's cheating, but it works. So this is what we've got now. This is where the strings come in, and I've got two sets of strings, just copy and pasted one above the other. The first half is just the, the cellos, then the cellos, the high cellos come in afterwards. Very subtle. That's the volume adjusted up. And you can see now there's a second set of cellos coming. And that's everything in. And I'm happy with that. I don't think it needs anything else. If you start adding more to it, you could swamp it. And I don't want to do that. So, yeah, that's it. So next time you hear it, it'll be a full track, all mixed and sounding shiny. I hope.